We all want children to have the best possible life, full of happiness without suffering. Would it be wrong to increase the possibility by selecting children with, say, the absence of genetic disorders? You could choose your children's traits by ensuring your children's other parent has desired traits, using gametes from donors with desired traits, carrying out a prenatal genetic diagnosis to ensure embryos have alleles for the desired characteristic, and gene editing. The selection of partners is an individual's right to shape their own life. Jia Feng from China divorced and won his lawsuit against his wife when his child was born not looking like either parent. He then came to know that his wife had plastic surgery to improve her appearance and felt his wife had deceived him as she had not disclosed her transmissible genetic traits. Deception is wrong as it robs a person's freedom to make an informed choice. Identifying T-sex disease carriers among Ashkenazi Jews to advise them against marrying each other was initiated with the setting up of Dor Yesharim. T-sex is a disease with no treatment, causing brain tissue degeneration with resulting seizures, paralysis, blindness, pneumonia and ultimately death by age 3 or 4. Thus, preventing the conception of T-sex sufferers would be compassionate respecting the child's and family's best interests. But selecting traits is discriminatory when, as in Singapore, a third party, the government, provided incentives to a section of the population, university graduates, to marry and have children with a eugenic aim of increasing the population's intelligence. Use or abuse of trait selection of children is even easier as technology enables selection of gametes having alleles with specific traits. Kindness may motivate the selection of gametes free of the disease allele so as to spare the child from suffering. However, using gametes from those considered to have desirable alleles, like Nobel laureate scientists or students from Ivy League universities, likens children to products to be designed and manufactured rather than treated as human beings deserving of spontaneous and unconditional love. Further to selecting gametes, Embryo selection based on pre-implantation genetic diagnosis allows for choosing a future child based on alleles with known functions, while gene editing may enable us to modify our child's characteristics. Screening and selecting against a disease or editing the allele causing disease and suffering like Tay-Sex seems difficult to criticize. But with late onset or non-fatal conditions like Huntington's disorder or Down syndrome, are we assuming that people with the genetic disease have less fulfilling lives than the so-called normal? Some sufferers of genetic disorders have voiced out the value of their lives and the joy and fulfillment they get despite the suffering. For others, the burden could be too heavy. So since what the unborn child wants is not known, Parents will have to decide. Potential parents will no doubt be fearful for their child's future if the child's mental or physical traits restrict the child's ability to look after themselves. So the parents may feel it to be caring to prevent the incidence of genetic disease, and they may not be wrong. Since nature allots advantages and disadvantages without considering fairness, isn't it more equitable to allow for selection to all who need it? As environmental interventions are allowed, genetic selection seems equally ethically defensible if undertaken freely and does not disadvantage children. But then there is the possibility that parents may be inclined to choose according to models accepted by society, male, fair, or even deaf in the case where deaf parents wanted to select a deaf child so the child could integrate into the family more easily. While parents have rights, is the selection of a child with a disease or disability ethical since parents knowingly reduce the child's potential or consciously bring about pain and suffering to a future person? Traits, however, can be undesirable in certain circumstances but beneficial in others. For example, the deaf stunt woman Kitty O'Neill said that deafness helped her concentration. Edward Munch, the painter of the screen, said, My troubles are part of me and my art. I want to keep those sufferings. So when editing out disease alleles, 
Could we be eliminating that person? There is still much to consider concerning what we should and should not do. Prevent, allow, encourage. Do share your opinions on selecting children, whether for normalization or enhancement. And if you would like to read more about this topic, listed are some references. Thank you for watching. More such videos can be found on my channel.